Hey everyone, this is Noble Artist here, and today in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make the magnetic rangefinder. Now, someone left in the comments that it's like one of the scouters from Dragon Ball Z, which is probably closer to what it is than an actual rangefinder. But this here is a breakthrough in Lego custom technology, and I'm going to, if it focuses. Um, but this was the last figure or last custom that I made, and it had this magnetic rangefinder, which um, I, in my opinion is a lot better than the other ones. Well, look-wise, it's not going to look like the ones that they have in the movies and show, but it's a lot cooler and um, it's more fun to make and it's easier to make. So we're going to go with all those um, reasons. So if you didn't already see it, go check out this. this. is my last custom. Really awesome. It's from the UPIC Eye Paint. Also, um, speaking of that, I know I didn't do one on Monday. Work has been picking up, so I've been kind of busy um, with my actual job. But I did go through the colors and I picked this color scheme. Um, I didn't remember the names of these two people, but I will um, get those names out. But I did actually pick two. I really like these. I think this one was a commando with a shotgun. Um, this one, I believe, was a phase two arc trooper, I believe, which was supposed to be with these colors. But I really like these two color schemes, so I'm actually going to do both of them. And they're going to be, hopefully, without or through this week. Um, I'll make both of them this week. Um, if I can, and then I will pick another one for, for next Monday, if possible. Um, work has just been really busy, and it's kind of hard to get um, stuff finished. These also I've been working on. These are the fully posable um, Kashyyyk snipers. So anyway, moving on <clears throat> to this tutorial. So what you're going to need material-wise, we have magnetics. These are neo... Um, I'm going to butcher this word just because it's hard to say sometimes. Neo... Mag or Neo, it's magnesium, not magnesium, um, lithium ion. I don't, uh, I can't remember what the name of the battery is. Wow, it's, um, I want to say it's neo lithium, neo something. Anyway, I don't know why I said battery. These are magnets. You basically need really small magnets. It's one of those things that I remember the word, or the name, I it just, it's hard for me to pronounce it. So, because of that, I keep butchering it. But you need really small magnets. You can even go to eBay, type in small magnets and you'll get these type of things. So you need those. I have here a piece of plastic. This is, a, you can't see it because it's see-through. Maybe you can get the shine. Thin plastic, those come off of anything. You can get them from packages, um, anything that has like a plastic case around. A lot of toys have them. Also, you need some metal. This here, I'm using copper, um, just because it's, or copper color. The metal is a little bit thicker than the other metal I had, because I got this metal and I didn't really use it just because it's hard to cut through. Um, it's not as easy, so, but I do have that. I'm going to be using that just because for this piece it might be easier to have, or be better in the long run to have it a little bit more sturdy. Um, so those are the materials. You also need a clone helmet. Now this one is made from a clone helmet that I had to bore the hole into. This one already has one in there, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, work off of that. We're also going to need an exacto knife. I have two sets of scissors. One is for cutting metal, and this one I'll probably use for cutting this plastic just because it's a little bit easier. Tweezer bees, obviously, and then some glue. Now there is another aesthetic piece that I use is, oops, um, I did put clay on there to make that smooth. Um, that's optional, but if you want, I can go ahead and do that at the end um, of the tutorial. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take the exacto knife, and then what we're gonna do is just put it into the hole of this head. This is where the rangefinder should go normally, and then we're just gonna spin that sucker around and around. Basically, we're trying to open that, open that hole up. Now, it might have been a little bit easier with the other helmet that I had to bore into, um, but we will see. So, I'm going to go ahead and take one of these little magnets off, off of that row, and then drop it into that hole. Make sure, you basically just want to get this hole well enough that it's flush with the helmet. And I actually went a little bit too deep here. You can see how it sinks into, into the helmet, uh, but that should be okay. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. We're going to go ahead and pop it out if it wants to come out. So now that we have the hole where we want it, we're going to do some glue. This is actually new glue. Well, it's still super glue that I use, but it's a new one. I ran out of the other one. We're going to do this very gently. Put a little bit of little bead of glue. This glue hopefully won't go shooting everywhere because it is it is new. Now that I've got some glue in there, you might not be able to see it, but it's kind of shiny. It doesn't really matter which direction this goes into. 
as long as you put it in there um, flush so that's what we want you want to make sure that it is it is flush with the helmet like so like I said it doesn't really matter what direction because the first one um, we'll, we'll need to make sure that we get this direction glued on correctly um, when we do that but make sure that that is glued on there that's probably gonna dry really fast um, make sure you can fit back on the head because I noticed that it it is sticking out a little bit Okay, the head goes, or the helmet goes back on the head. This will actually be the the helmet that I'll, I'll most likely be using. Um, yeah, it got a little bit of glue on the inside. That's okay. Um, this will most likely be the helmet that I'm going to use for that shotgun trooper for the UPIC eye paint. Um, so that's going to be uh, pretty cool when I finish that. So anyway, um, now that we have this magnet piece on, we're going to try to get the actual range finder itself built. So, modeling after this one, we're going to need somewhat of a triangle piece. Um, for that. So what we're going to do is take these scissors and at an angle we kind of want to do like a half it's kind of like a triangle piece in a sense. I'm not sure what shape. This shape probably has a name but um, oops. I'm just going to drop it. Come here. It's hard to pick up a flat item. Okay so <clears throat> making sure we get that right. We want it to be okay so like so, we want this kind of piece. We don't want it that long either. Trim that off. It's actually really wide. We don't want it that wide. That might be too long. You just kind of have to trim it up. Use, use your judgment. Um, and then I'm just going to put it onto the side of the head, like so, just hold it with my hand. And then with my other hand, my other thumb, bend it around the helmet. You want it to have that bend and get that shape to it. Um, so now that we have the shape, let's see, okay, we've got the shape we want. Now, um, what we need to do is add the plastic piece. Now, the plastic piece are basically going to make the same shape, we're just going to make it a little bit smaller. So, cut at an angle, and that just went flying. And of course it is see-through, so if it hits the ground, it's pretty much gone forever. Oh no. Uh, I lost it. Oh well. I guess I'll make another one. That happens. Yeah, just be careful when you're <laughs> when you're working. Watch out for flying materials. Okay, so we will get another piece cut. No problemo. Make sure it's going to go flying everywhere. Okay. So now that we have this piece cut, you might not be able to see it. It's the same, it's the same shape um, of the top piece. It's just going the other way. So now that we have this shape cut out, what we're going to do is glue it. I'm actually going to flatten it back out because we bent it to make it go around the helmet just to make sure um, that it would go around the helmet. Now I'm actually going to take these pliers, these duck bill pliers, flatten it back out because now we're going to be gluing it to the plastic piece. And then we want to glue it like so, let's see, okay that's, a, that's too big. So we're going to trim up this plastic piece a little bit. There is some, some editing involved with the material. I mean you cut it and then it's like nope too big, too small, you got to keep trimming it um, to get it to where you want it. So. We're going to, let's see how I can do this, I'm going to try to hold this left handed so you can see this process. If I can manage to grab it, we're going to put a little bit of glue, I'm going to put the glue onto the metal itself. So put some glue on the back piece, if my glue wants to cooperate. Once I've used it a little bit, it should get a bit easier. Okay, so put some glue onto the back piece. And then let's do. This needs to be facing the right direction. That always helps. Put that like so. You're basically kind of just catty quartering it. So, I don't know if you could be if you were able to see that, but I, I pretty much just glued the top this metal piece 
to the plastic piece. I'm not sure if you can see that, if it focuses or not. That right there, focus. Maybe you understand me. I hope you understand me. Um, and now that we have, so now that we have the plastic glued to the metal, which one piece now, I'm actually going to trim this metal a little bit. I don't want that sharp corner on there. Um, and then we don't want this sharp corner on the plastic. So let's just trim that off. I wish this plastic was a little bit easier to see. I'm actually going to color that in so you'll be able to see it. I... To the Sharpie bag! Yes, I have a bag full of Sharpies. Now, let's take a color that's easy to see for all. That should do. This will make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. Psych! The Sharpie doesn't want to do that. We'll do the Sharpie. I couldn't make this one red. Nah. There we go. So now that we got this working, I'm just taking the Sharpie and then just coloring in, um, coloring in that uh, material. Now what you could do once you do that is put some more glue onto the coloring um, in order to keep it there. Once it fully dries, it should be okay. But sometimes when you use Sharpies and stuff, it won't dry properly. But maybe you can see a little bit better that that is the shape that we were trying to go for. Yeah. So now that we have that piece on, we're gonna put it back on the helmet, hold hold the end piece on, and then bend it back with our hand. And also when you have the, the thicker metal, it will hold that bend a lot easier because it is a stronger metal um, to do that with. So now that we have the bend, and then realizing that this doesn't go as far over as I would wish it would in front of the helmet. I wish it would kind of come out more like in front of that whole eye piece. Um, now what we can either do is add another piece to the end of this, or I can just glue it on so you can see what it looks like um, and just move on from there. But I'm actually going to, because I'm actually using this piece, I'm going to, um, I'm going to extend it really quick. So. If you will excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will edit this part out so you don't have to watch me do this because it is a mistake and if you do it right, you won't need to know how to fix it. So, I will be back. Okay, so now that we have the extended piece on this range finder, we are now ready to finally attach it, but we're gonna attach the magnet and that's gonna be um, probably the last step until we put the if I do use the clay, it's just a, an aesthetic, so we probably won't be using that um, for this video. But um, what we're going to do next is, um, as you can tell, this magnet will only go onto this one a, a certain way, like so. And what we want to do is we need to make sure that we, we know what that side is. So put the magnet on how it should be, look at that side, and then take off the, um, take off the magnet. Position, okay, I'm trying to remember how to do this the first time. I'm gonna use this, this my hands. Um, hold the piece over the, the hole with your thumb, so just put it over it with your thumb. Take the magnet, and then just drop it where it should go. And then the power of the magnet should hold it in place, like so. So now the magnet itself is just holding it on here. Um, it can move, it can do everything that we want it to do. The only thing is that this magnet is not secure. So what we're gonna do now is put a little bit of glue that's actually a lot of glue. Don't do what I just did. Whoa! Don't drop the camera. My tripod is, is on its struggle bus right now. Tripod! You're ruining my video, tripod. Okay. Um, so now that we have... Now that we have a whole lot of glue, we don't really need all that much, but it's on there, so... Um, just push that around. Don't want it all on there. I'm actually going to use some of this to cover or that part we did over there. Um, so yeah, once this glue dries, you'll be able to take the rangefinder off, put it back on, um, all that cool fun stuff. And um, if you want, I can put the clay on there, but it doesn't look that bad as is. So you can paint it up right now. 
Um, the only difference between what it looks like now and what it would look like if it had the clay on it, um, as you can see right there, is that it's a little bit more aerodynamic, I guess. It's a little sleeker, gives it a, a nicer, a more polished design. Um, but that's kind of up to you if you want to do that. You can use other materials, you can use other things if you wish. So um, that's kind of an option. Um, if you want to see how I do that, let me know and I will, um, I'll probably do this technique for this visor or for this rangefinder. So let me know down below in the comments if you want to see me put the clay on it. And when I do that, I will make a video um, showing you guys how to do that. But this glue should be dry enough that we can take this off of the figure. So that's what it looks like without it. This is what it looks like. But this is what it looks like. And then it just snaps on. Bloop, whoop. Like so. So that's how you make the magnetic range finder. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to hitchhike it. Also, the first person to leave a comment on this video gets a shout out in my next video, which I will put right up in here. Um, also, don't forget to fist pound that subscribe button. Bam! And I will put a link to my other tutorials up in this corner. So, also, don't forget to let me know down, down below in the description what other tutorials you want to see me make and what other customs you want to see me make because I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, trying to do it, trying to do it all. Um, also, until the end of February, uh, my birthday is at the end of February, so at the end of that, until then, all the stuff on my eBay, which was also a link down below in the description. Everything's going to have free shipping. Um, I'm going to try to put this, whoop, put this guy on eBay um, tonight and this figure on eBay tonight as well. So both of them will be on there. Um, then when I'm done, all four of those um, snipers will be on eBay as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. Y'all have a super awesome, fantastic day. God bless. And if you do make this, let me know, make a video. I'd love to see it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.